we bring together for you the best photographers in the world. I would say my style of photography is very cinematic. It's nearly like taking a stills from, I'd like to think, a stills from a, a movie. Um, I use a lot of lighting, it's, some of it's very theatrical, it's very set up, and it's very considered. I'm certainly not a reportage photographer, that's for sure. So very often when I have an idea, I have to sit with the idea. I have to sit on the idea for a while, maybe one or two months until I start the production. I plan the shoot in a very detailed way, a little bit like um, an advertising photographer. Um, I create mood boards, everything is very, very considered when I come to shooting. For example, I would have wrecked the location already three or four times. I would have chosen my angle, what I want to shoot, um, what story I'm trying to tell, uh, which person is going to be in the shot, so that when I do come into the um, setup, so to speak, I, um, we know exactly what everybody is, is doing and how I'm going to create the shoot. I tend not to use much post-production. I think people think I do or have because it sometimes may look like that, but a lot of it is through my lighting. Because I use so much lighting, I can enhance colors, or accentuate things with my lighting. One of my earlier pieces of work is Mothers and Daughters. Again, a subject matter that was very close to me. Uh, the project was about the relationship that I have with my mother my sisters have with my mother and the relationship my mother had with her mother. This was in a way a different, quite an interesting project because I cast real mothers and daughters and photographed them in their real homes. So I wanted to make it look as real as possible, but at the same time for them to act my life. Before digital, I would shoot on a 5-4 plate camera, which means one sheet of film at a time and it really slows you down it really makes you look at your subject matter nearly like a still life object and i think that's why my images tend to look very possibly very set up and the colors are always very considered in each situation i'm not a black and white photographer it is all about color i always create the pictures and create the setting for example, um, when my mother and I were reflecting back on the past, I have this scene in a dining room table. I bring in my own photo album into this scenario. I bring in props that suit my background life. And I ask the mother to cry for me, which she then does. Um, but everything is totally set up. Recently, I released a project on feral children. I very much live and breathe and start dreaming about the project. I started having nightmares about what it really must be like to be in their situation and how they could have survived and how they, some of them who, have, who are still living now, how they're coping with life these days. Children who became feral for different reasons. They were either neglected in life from their parents, or for example, I read a book on Marina Chapman, and she was kidnapped, drugged, and taken into the forest or into the jungle, woke up and survived there for the next four or five years. She survived by copying the behavior of capuchin monkeys. And I found that absolutely fascinating. And I thought I'd make that into a photographic project. It was very hard to find the children that had the right look, 
they were from the right country that had to look slightly malnourished, so had to be very skinny, and had to have great acting abilities. And that took me a long time to find these children. Start to finish, I would say the project took about a year and a half. But don't forget, in between, I'm also shooting commissions. So it's not like it's a start stop um, process because it's always on my mind. And even if I'm doing a shoot during the day, I would come back to the evenings and work on the idea. As it's not a commission project, I have to finance everything myself, which can be incredibly costly. I use a lot of lighting, which means two huge vans full of equipment, getting all the equipment into the location or into the forest, many assistants, at least seven or eight assistants, um, hair and makeup artists, a specialist artists for, for the bodywork um, and for their skin, uh, the stylist and a couple of runners. So we're quite a lot of people. My father-in-law uh, was slowly becoming blind. Uh, unfortunately, he's passed away a year ago. And I suddenly had this nightmare. What would it be like as a photographer to become blind? That's my passion is photography. It's what I do. It's, it's my life. If I can't see, what will I do? So I thought this would make an amazing project. I had a casting director who contacted uh, blind people and asked them to come forward for the photographic shoot. And I thought, well, maybe they won't be very interested because they won't see the images. So what are they gonna get out of it? Um, so I let the people choose their own backgrounds. Again, something I've never done before. I let them take more control than I normally do. And then also the experience of being photographed. All the other senses are heightened when you can't see. Uh, one blind person said to me, what do you do when you kiss? You close your eyes. What makes a great photograph is when you look at the image and you have a feeling about it. It's something that is very moving and also different. I think the main thing is to believe in your own work and try and shoot something different that other people haven't seen before. Be inspired. Be better. Be great.